Hi guys, welcome back to a new video in Microbiological Insights and in this video we will see about the very very important basic technique in microbiology that is about the gram straining. So here in this video we will see about the history, principle, procedure and observations of gram straining procedure. This is the photograph of Hans Christian Gram who developed this technique. As you all know that this technique was developed by Hans Christian Gram, who is a Danish physician in the year 1884. And this Gram staining method is the most widely employed staining method in the bacteriology. And when we talk about the Gram staining procedure, it is an example of a differential staining method. What is differential staining? So it can differentiate or distinguish organisms based on their staining properties. Here in the gram staining procedure, it will differentiate the bacteria into two groups that is the gram negative and gram positive. In the previous video, we saw about the simple staining technique. No, there we are using only a single dye that is the basic dye such as uh, methylene blue or saffronin or crystal violet we used that. In the simple staining technique, we will see only the cell shape size and arrangement of bacteria but here we will distinguish the bacteria into two groups gram positive and negative then hans christian gram after getting graduation from the medical school in 1883 he traveled throughout the europe and finally he settled in berlin in 1884 he joined under the leadership of dr friedlander at that time, Dr. Friedlander was trying to develop a staining technique. The technique differentiate the bacterial cells from the eukaryotic nuclei. So he worked with the lung tissue taken from the patients who died of pneumonia. So Christian Graham also worked with the Dr. Friedlander and he noticed that certain stains was preferentially taken up by certain group of bacteria. He again did that experiment repeatedly. So what he did is the Christian Gram dried a smear from the lung tissue taken from the patients who died of pneumonia and then he uh, dried that smear and after that he poured the gentian violet or crystal violet solution over it. So after some time he rinsed that uh, solution with water and then he added the Lugol solution which is potassium triiodide solution. Here the Lugol solution acts as a mordant. The role of the mordant is it fixes the dye to the organism. After that he poured ethanol over that slide to wash away the dye. So what he noticed? He noticed certain bacteria that is uh, pneumococci retained the color. Pneumococci is a gram positive bacteria no? and some species was decolorized by the action of alcohol. So he called it as gram negative organism. While he was doing his experiment in the initial time, he performed his experiments on streptococcus pneumonia and Klebsiella pneumonia. In, uh, he used only the first three steps. He did not use a counter staining technique in his procedure. So the counter stain only stained the gram negative bacteria. No? He did not use that step. After few years, a German pathologist named Karl Wegert who only developed the final step of staining with safranin. Now we are using the four steps now. So that final step was developed by Carl Weigert and the first three step was only developed by Hans Christian Gram. So now let's see about the overview of Gram positive and Gram negative cell wall. So the Gram positive cell wall has a thick layer of peptidoglycan, ticoic acid, lipoticoic acid and some surface protein. But the cell wall of gram negative bacteria have a thin layer of peptidoglycan. It has periplasmic space. Then it also have uh, lipoprotein, lipopolysaccharides. And uh, here all, uh, you see the structure of porin no? 
and here also having receptor protein so that uh, structure is totally different so now let's see about the gram positive cell wall overview so the primary component of gram positive bacterial cell wall is peptidoglycan so the peptidoglycan is a macro molecule which is composed of a sugar molecule and amino acids and these sugars and amino acids are assembled structurally like a woven material no so it's like a uh, cloth arranged like that and the amino sugars uh, like uh, NAG and NAM are uh, present alternatively in the peptidoglycan layer. The NAG and NAM molecules are crossed linked together by short peptide chain. This cross linkage only give strength to the peptidoglycan layer and it gives its thick layered structure. What's the role of the peptidoglycan layer? This peptidoglycan layer provides protection for the bacteria and it only gives a defined shape to the organism. When we see the gram positive cell wall, it has several layers of peptidoglycan layer and this thick layer of peptidoglycan helps the gram positive bacteria to retain most of the crystal violet dye while doing the staining, gram staining. So only it takes the color of the crystal violet and appeared as purple color. So this is the reason behind the purple color of gram positive bacteria. This is the structure of peptidoglycan. When we see this structure, here the NAG, N-acetyl glucosamine, here N-acetyl muramic acid, they are arranged alternatively and they linked together with the short polypeptide chains. So we will see this about in detail in another video. The gram positive cell walls also contain chains of tachyic acid. So this tachyic acid extends from the plasma membrane through the peptidoglycan layer cell wall. No, So it arises from the plasma membrane and it cross through the peptidoglycan layer some gram positive bacteria have an additional component what is that component mycolic acid in their cell walls this mycolic acid produces a waxy coat on the outer surface of the bacteria so which gives additional protection for that bacteria so when we see about the mycobacteria it possesses mycolic acid we call that bacteria as acid fast bacteria we cannot stain the mycobacterium tuberculosis using this procedure. For mycobacterium tuberculosis, we are using the acid for staining method. So, I think you clearly got the idea about the gram positive bacteria. Now, let us uh, see about the gram negative bacteria. So, this gram negative bacterial cell wall also have peptidoglycan layer like the gram positive bacteria, but it has a single thin layer and this thin layer does not retain the crystal violet dye which is the primary stain which uh, we are using in the gram staining procedure. The stain was washed in the successive steps. In the final step we are adding the counter stain now. So this gram negative cell take the counter stain pink color only. So it appears as pink color after the gram staining. When we see about the cell wall structure of gram positive bacteria, it is more complex than that of the gram positive bacteria because here gram negative bacteria have an additional outer membrane. But the outer membrane is not present in the gram positive bacteria. So it has an additional outer membrane which contains lipids. It also have a periplasmic space. This periplasmic space also absent in the gram positive cell wall. It also have membrane proteins, murine, lipoproteins. These all are attached on the outer membrane to the cell wall. This is the difference between the gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So now let us move on to the principle of the gram staining procedure which is very very important. In the gram staining procedure we are using the four basic step. In the first step the smear is stained with a basic dye crystal violet which is the primary stain. Uh, what is the role of the crystal violet? 
the crystal violet dissociates into Cv plus and Cl minus ions in aqueous solution. These ions penetrates through the cell wall and cell membrane of both the gram positive and gram negative cell walls. Then this Cv plus ion, so positive ion interacts with the negative charge components of the bacterial cells because the um, bacterial cell possesses the negative charge. So this positive ion reacts or interacts with the negative charged components of the bacterial cells and it stain that cells the its purple color. And then the next treatment is with a mordant which is a Gram's iodine solution here. This mordant helps the dye to bind to a cell and it forms a complex. So in the second step the crystal violet and iodine forms a complex, a CVI complex within the inner and outer layers of the cell. In the first step the crystal violet uh, dissociate into Cv plus and Cv minus ions and then this Cv plus interacts with the negative charge components of the bacterial cells and gives the cell the purple color. Then what happens in the next step we are adding the iodine solution. So this crystal violet and iodine forms a CVI complex within the inner and outer layers of the cell. The iodine increases the interaction between the cell and the dye. So the cell is stained more strongly. In this step the, cell, the interaction between the cell and dye increases by the action of the iodine. And the third step is washing with ethanol or acetone. So it acts as a decolorizer. It interacts with the lipids of the cell membrane. So we already saw about the peptidoglycan layer. No, the gram-negative organism have a thin peptidoglycan layer, and it has a large pore size. While compared to the gram-positive cell wall, which have a thick peptidoglycan layer, what happens in the gram-negative bacteria means? it failed to retain the CVA complex because it gets decolorized easily or it gets washed away by the large pore size of the peptidoglycan layer. Now in the third step the gram positive bacteria retains the primary stains color purple but the gram negative bacteria fails to retain the color. It becomes colorless. A gram positive cell becomes dehydrated from an ethanol treatment. So what happens in the gram positive cell? So during ethanol treatment it gets dehydrated. So it loses its water. The cell walls pores cl gets closer. It prevents the stain from escaping out of the cell. The large CVA complexes become trapped within the gram positive cell wall. The gram positive cell wall have about 40 layers of peptidoglycan. So the pore size is very thin. In the third step the gram positive cell wall retain the CVA complex but the gram negative cell wall fail to retain the CVA complex and becomes colorless. And what is the final step counter staining with safranin. This counter stain imports or gives colors to the gram negative bacteria because in the third step of the gram negative bacteria is colorless no it only takes the stain counter stain and it appears pink to red in color the gram positive bacteria already have the purple color this is the basic principle of the gram staining procedure now let's move on to the procedure of the gram staining you can take a clean glass slide and uh, place a drop of specimen over it make a thin smear and heat fix that smear. Before applying the stain you must allow the slide to cool otherwise it get broken no. After that you add the primary stain crystal violet and you have to wait for 30 seconds. Wash off the stain with water. Drain off the excess water and then you add gram iodine and let it stand for one minute. Then wash off the gram iodine also then you hold the slide at a 45 degree angle and apply the decolorizer 
if you are adding the ethanol it flows down the surface of the slide you cannot apply the decolorizer for more than 15 second and thick smears can take only longer decolorization time then stop the decolorization by washing the slide with a gentle stream of water or distilled water then cover the smear with saffronin you keep the slide for one minute then after that wash off the excess stain with water and blow dry the water with absorbent paper and air dry the slide then you can visualize the slide under oil immersion you will see a purple colored bacteria which is gram positive if you see pink or red color bacteria it is termed as gram negative these are the gram staining solutions crystal violet gram iodine ethanol and saffronin and this is the overview of gram positive and gram negative procedure first is you have to heat fix that slide then add crystal violet and wait for 30 seconds then the this is the primary stain then you are going to add mordant and wait for one minute in the first step all the cells appear purple in color both the cell forms the CVA complex here and looks purple but in the third step you are going to decolorize with the alcohol and then the here you see the colorless bacteria but the gram positive bacteria retains the primary stains color and here you are going to add the saffronin and wait for one minute here the colorless cells only take the counter stain saffronin and becomes red or pink in color so the gram positive bacteria is like this and gram negative bacteria is like this and these are the photographs of gram positive bacteria after uh, gram staining gram positive rod shaped bacteria this is bacillus anthraxis and here you are seeing bunch bunch of gram positive cocaine so it is staphylococcus aureus this is also the gram stained bacteria gram positive bacteria having the endospores you see the colorless area no that is endospore uh, the endospore also we have some other technique so we will see in further videos and this is the gram negative bacteria which is rod shaped Escherichia coli this is gram negative cocci Neisseria meningitis which is diplococci if you have any doubts you please write your doubts in the comment section okay thank you if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe share like and click the bell button if you have any more doubts you can write your doubts in the comment section below thank you